welcome. I have with me the Indian Finance Minister, Mr. P. Chidambaram, right here inside the Congress Centre on the second day of the World Economic Forum's 44th annual meeting here in Davos. Mr. Chidambaram, thank you very much for your time first. Uh, what's the reception that India is getting here? Because for the last few years, we've been quite literally down in the dumps. I don't know about the last few years. I haven't been here for three years. But I think the reception is quite warm and quite friendly. A number of investors have met me. They're all very bullish about India. Everyone has told me about his or her investment plans in India for the next few years. I'm meeting with some ministers. And uh, I think there is widespread recognition that in a globally slowing situation, India, among a few countries, has been able to keep its head above water. So you said you haven't been here for three years. Uh, that had to do with you taking on another portfolio uh, within the government. Do you think that was probably the one big reason for why we seem to have lost course in the I can't, last five years? I can't the reason I'm question. saying this is because everybody I meet and all the global business leaders and the Indian business leaders say, we were doing well in 2010 when the entire world was weeping. Uh, and, and somewhere we went off track and, and it turned <laughs> It turned out very poorly for us. I can't comment on that. But you must remember that following the crisis of 2008, it was a stimulus package that boosted economic growth in 2009, 10 and 10-11. That stimulus package had its upsides because it stabilized growth. It also had some unintended consequences such as breaching the fiscal deficit limits and uh, giving a boost to inflation. So I think uh, that debate will go on for some time. Uh, beyond that, I can't comment on what happened over the last uh, uh, three years. But of the last three years, I've been back in the finance ministry for a year and a half. Okay. And you've been working hard to bring the fiscal deficit under control. You drew a red line at 4.8%, and all the reports seem to indicate that you might actually come in well below that at about 4.6%. Can you give us a sneak Are you peek disappointed? Not at all. Okay. Do I sound disappointed? Can you give I us a sneak don't. Peek no, I can't. Wait, wait until February 17. It's not too far away. For the vote on account? Yep. Is this going to be a routine vote on account or there are expectations that you all might use the occasion though I know that there are different views on what should be within a vote on account and what not. Uh, are you going to use the occasion to announce more? We can't make any changes in the Income Tax Act. Short of that, I don't think there are any other constraints. Mr. Chidambaram, that's uh, a fairly big field left wide open. Yeah, but that's the legal position. Sh short of amending the Income Tax Act or any other tax laws, short of that, I think uh, the government of the day is free to make any kind of statement in Parliament along with the vote on account. So besides tax changes, sorry, I'm a little slow. Besides tax changes, you could pretty much announce anything. Or in besides fact, tax changes that entail an amendment to the... Not besides, except, except, except tax, tax changes. changes that, yeah. But only those that require an amendment to the Act. Because there are some that can be done without amending the Act. Oh, that we are doing. Yeah, that so whatever we want to notify under excise or customs, we are notifying them. So, is there, so I'm just wondering what should we look forward to on the 17th? Well, instance? I can't give you a preview of a budget. You'll have to wait until the 17th it's of not February. a budget, sir. You just said it's a it vote is. on account. No, no. It is a full... Uh, the budget numbers will be presented for the next year. We don't... The appropriation is only for four months. Okay. This last minute mad dash effort to get some of the disinvestment issues out in this quarter, uh, you know, to, if I may use the word, extract special dividends from PSUs, um, to clear HZL and Balco uh, disinvestment, which have been pending now for years. Uh, All this is, you've got it completely wrong. Okay. I said and I'm correct. afraid the question is also loaded and biased. There's no last minute dash. I had set out a calendar and I had made it very clear that this investment will take place only in the second half of the financial year. And we are adhering to that calendar. 
we are disinvesting according to that calendar which I had made public sometime in um, I think September or so. So there's no last minute dash. As far as special dividends are concerned, we have we convened a meeting of the public sector companies at the beginning of the year, once again in the middle of the year, and we made it clear to them the rule is use it or lose it. You have to use your money for investment. If you are not able to use your money for investment, you have to return to the shareholder. I want you to look at the document put out by the third plenum of the Communist Party of China. Public sector is set up to create wealth and part of that wealth must be returned to the owner of the public sector company for use in other areas. What do I do with the money? I don't consume it. We use it for investment. We invest in other areas. So I think what we are doing is perfectly in sync with what is the right thing to do and how we approach the public sector. Okay. So is that, does that mean that the fiscal deficit numbers are going to come in closer to 4.6 than 4.8? As I said, you can try every way which way. You will not get an answer. You'll have to wait until February 17. Uh, uh, how much? Can you give me a sense of the, uh, the amount in excess of the 50,000 that you put down for disinvestment uh, that you're going to be able to collect through the course of this quarter if you were to add special dividends, etc. on it? Then we can do the math ourselves back home. See, some part of it will be shifted from under the head of disinvestment to the head of other non-tax revenues. So you'll have to read the papers carefully. If, if it's disinvested, it comes under one head. If it is special dividend, it comes under another head. Sure. But between the two, I'm confident we can achieve our target. Or exceed it, maybe? That I don't know. We'll see. There are spectrum auction has to take place. So I don't know the number that will come there. <laughs> uh, there's one more That's non-tax revenue. So, but you won't give me any numbers to work with. Well, I don't so know I the number. Not the spectrum to, auction. That's well, not the spectrum standard. auction is a big number. That will fill. If you use uh, the reserve price as one basis for a number, you know what the minimum you'd like but to But uh, last time we had a reserve price, there were no bidders. But this is 900 megahertz, right? So unlikely yeah, that see. you won't have any bidders. Yeah, let's see. I mean, this is the bread and butter stuff. I don't know. I mean, companies. you know more about bidders than I do. I don't know. Uh, Okay, but at least can I say this, that you're confident that we will come in below 4.8%? No, this? all you can say is that the red line will not be breached. Okay, there's one more question that's come in and this is a news report that's playing out in India today which has to do with a letter written by Mrs. Sonia Gandhi uh, to the government asking for a rollback in some of the measures that you all had imposed on gold imports, the 80-20 measure. And I'm wondering whether any of this is on the agenda. I have not I, read the letter, I don't know. Okay, so I, you know, I'm sorry to catch you off guard, but this was a piece of news that came in and the news channels are covering it, so I thought I'd put it to you if that's part of the agenda currently. I have not read the letter, so I don't know. But uh, until we have a firm grip on the current account deficit, uh, I do not contemplate um, any rollback of any measure. We will get a full idea of the current account deficit only when the budget is presented and when the year comes to an end. Uh, so with regards to spending cuts, uh, can you talk us through what we can expect in this quarter? Again, part of the Spending cuts is a misnomer. Okay. I've repeatedly said that. We always over budget for our programs because ministries, departments are ambitious they think they can spend that kind of money. So we always over budget. Okay, over the years, just look at the numbers for the last five years or six years. Every year we have captured savings. There are rules in the government, the GFR. We go by the rules. When savings are there, we capture those savings. When those savings are captured, it leads to a reduction in expenditure. But it can't be simplistically described as spending cuts. It's actually capturing savings in an over-budgeted situation. This reduction in expenditure, does it change your expectations of GDP growth at all? For the next fiscal, because this See, fiscal now we know we're going to come in below 5 and 4.8 or 4.9. GDP growth is a fa factor of, is, is, is a product of many factors. See, for example, if you don't collect a certain tax revenue that you anticipated. That money is still in the hands of the people. They will spend it. Whether you spend money under plan expenditure or non-plan expenditure, as far as impact on the 
economy is concerned, it is expenditure. Um, if uh, there are savings on, on one head, but there's extra expenditure on another head, it is still expenditure. So I think uh, you can't say GDP will be affected by this or affected by that. GDP is a function of many, many factors. Our expectation is that the current year growth will be around 5%. But the next year, I predicted before and I predict now, growth will be 6% and above. And that's what the global economic outlook put out three days ago. The next year, they expect growth to be. Next year means calendar 2014 or financial year 2014-15. There's an overlap of nine months. Nine months of this calendar year plus three months of next calendar year. Growth will be over 6%. That's entirely according to my estimates. And the year after, growth will be 7% and above. And the year after, we will achieve our potential growth rate of 8%. We are on track. So whether we are a point one less than five or point one more than five this year is no doubt an event, but it's not going to have any impact on next year. Because all the investments that are taking place, all the reforms that have been done, all the changes that have been done will boost growth to over 6% next year. Are you disappointed with the low tax growth we've seen or the low growth in tax revenues? GDP slows down, tax revenues also so will you, fall short of the tax. Your expectations were ambitious last year in the budget? No, we had assumed the GDP growth rate of uh, what the RBI said between 6.1 and 6.7 so we had assumed that the GDP growth rate will be 6.4 if that growth does not happen obviously uh, we will not achieve the revenue targets uh, I have to ask you one more question about the impending elections what do you make of what is now being called this arc economics that we've seen unleashed in Delhi and now we've seen even Congress rule states like Maharashtra pick no, up cues Ma I have not, I have not, power, uh, I have not seen anything, I have not seen anything which can be called up economics. Uh, I, I don't know. The, the, I don't think even, I don't think, I don't think even policy. they will describe that as an economic policy. Maharashtra's case is very different. I had a word with the Chief Minister of Maharashtra. In Maharashtra, they were overcharging for power, far in excess of the rates charged in other states. So they appointed a committee in 2011. That committee has submitted its report now. Going by that committee's report, they have reduced power tariffs by 20% across the board. Surely there will be some hit on the recoveries from the power sector. But there will be benefits, spin-offs, by greater production and larger taxes in other areas. So, I am told by the Chief Minister Maharashtra that the reduction in power tariff will be revenue neutral for Maharashtra, which is sound economics. But we'll have to see uh, how the policy is implemented and how it plays out. How confident are you of the UP returning to power after this general election? See, nobody can predict in elections. Uh, the media, of course, uh, thinks it can predict an election. It, uh, it, it, it thought so in 2004 and 2009, and it was found uh, uh, hopelessly wrong, <laughs> be that as it may. Elections can never be predicted. Uh, two and a half months is still a long time for people to make up their mind. In 2004, the Congress party went into an election as an underdog. In 2009, because of incumbency of five years, they said, you're an underdog again. So let's assume that we go into this election as an underdog. I would rather that we go into an election as an underdog than in a triumphal mode or a triumphal note. Uh, I don't wish to name parties, but I can ask you to recall parties that went into an election in 2004 and 2009 a, on a triumphal note. Mr. there is... I know you're saying underdog, but the truth is there is considerable disappointment. We had an A-team in the UPA, and, and you know, the first term, 
the left bore some burden of not, you know, for the government not being able to move on many of the reform policies that it wanted to. In the second term, I understand we've had a volatile global environment, but so many domestic issues, policy issues, the environmental ministry, uh, there are a trillion of them, very odd FDI policy changes. Uh, Indian industry you talk to, and maybe they, they can't say it to you, but they do tell us that they're very, very disappointed. No, they talk to me quite frankly. You, you got it all wrong. They said, this was the A-team, this was the dream team, this was the A-team we wanted to lead the economy and look at where we are in 2013 or 14. Let me say once again, I'm not happy that we are ending the term with 5% growth. But the average of UPA 2 is short of the average of UPA 1 by about 1.2 or 1.3%. But it is above the average of NDA by a good 1.5% to 2%. So UPA 1 gets grade A. But if you are looking at UPA 2 and NDA, UPA 2 scores over NDA. Nevertheless, I'll be the first to admit that, apart from the external environment, perhaps some decisions taken within the country could have been taken differently or could have been uh, nuanced differently. For instance? Well, that's not relevant now. So we are not happy that we are ending the term with 5%, but please remember there are only half a dozen countries of the world which can boast of growth of 5% and more. We are one of those half a dozen countries. Talk to anyone in Davos talk to any minister who comes to the World Bank or IMF meeting, they are amazed that despite a global slowdown, India and five other countries have been able to keep their head above water, which is a 5% level. So this is not a matter of self-satisfaction or self-praise. Yes, given the difficulties, maybe we could have done better. But I don't think it's all gloom and doom as it's being presented. We are well on the way to recover. Now here, talk to anyone in Indian industry. i would spoken to dozens of them over the last couple of years. Everybody uses two words. The economy has stabilized, recovery is in sight. Well, let's hope that is the case. Okay. Thank you very much. And I hope some time. of that optimism and rubs in you. Thank you very much.